Right now, we are in the midst of a supernatural war. This is a war between light and darkness. It's a war between good and evil. It's a war between Christ and Antichrist. This supernatural war is a fight to the finish. It's not until you get tired or you get weary. We're not doing this in our strength. We're doing it in God's strength. St. Paul gives this battle cry. Put on the whole armor of God. That is a command. It is not a request. It is for your benefit. You be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. He says you put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. He says for our struggle it is not against flesh. And Praise the Lord. Greetings in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you one more time to this uh, session of... Um, uh, healings and deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. This is a school of deliverance and uh, we want to welcome you to join us uh, in another exciting lesson, lesson number 10, uh, where we're going to discuss, we're going to continue where we left last week on binding and losing and not only that, but I want to talk something uh, more important than what uh, we discussed last week about the three things the devil used to attack the people. I want to talk on that. And I pray that these lessons will help you to equip you, especially many of the intercessors across America and India have written back. Thank you for your feedback that you've given to us saying that uh, this is very helpful for your walk and your ministry. When some pastors have written to us and uh, uh, you know, with appreciative notes, uh, thanking for the uh, thing that we've been sharing. And I know that many people do not share this, many people do not talk about this. And, uh, you know, some of this teaching could be new. And uh, I know, uh, you know, there are uh, people like Brother Billy Cole have thought these and many other folks, many other wonderful men and women of God, uh, Sister Tanny has spoke about many of the things. So these are not something new that we are discussing today. And I don't want to, uh, you to think that this is my doctrine, my teaching, because everything is taken from the Word of God. And uh, just because some of us have not been exposed uh, to those things that uh, or encounter with the spiritual opposition and attacks, and uh, we are not um, equipped to do uh, e effectively the spiritual warfare. So that's why this teaching, this school is all about to equip these people that we will not be 
in a, utterly in, a, in ignorant. That's why the enemy wants us to do so that we were not able to uh, spoil his uh, agenda, his attack, his words against the church, against uh, you know the kingdom, against the people of God, and uh, he wants to keep us, um, you know, as long as he can in uh, total. Uh, ignorance so that we will just go about just doing whatever necessary it's good to talk about healing it's good to talk about salvation bapt uh, baptism in Jesus name uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit and it's good to just live a nominal Christian life but the moment that someone tap into the spiritual warfare and it cause certain kind of uneasiness even on the people because of the uncertainty. But what we are facing today is what been faced by the apostles and they uh, uh, were ignorant. They were equipped, uh, you know, um, powerfully, not only with the spirit, not only the word, but also with the knowledge and the revelation of what they need to do in pulling down strongholds. That's why they said, you know, uh, we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principality, against powers, against, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, prince of the air, every powers of the darkness in high places. That's what they spoke about. So uh, they were battling or uh, they were uh, waging war against the enemy, not only in Asia, but also in Europe and in the Middle East, in Asia Minor. And also, uh, you know, many of those warfare where they have engaged themselves uh, they were able to bring the victory before the harvest. We want you to know that uh, one thing the enemy will fight is that uh, the harvest that is ready. And he wants us to be in a total ignorant how to go about that there will not be a breakthrough revival in the churches. So uh, these things, I believe, is going to occupy you. And thank you for those of you that have been writing us back with your feedback, even in the posting in Gateway. Thank you. We appreciate that. I mean, praise God. So let us continue today on lesson 10 on the three things the devil used to attack people. I just want to let you know there are three things the enemy used. Number one is places. Amen. Places that are specifically dedicated to the demonic activity. Places of worship, idol worshiping, groves, temples, a monastery, a place uh, that the activity of the occult are being used. You know, um, there are places where, where that maybe you have not a, a custom of, but if you go to India, Malaysia, if you go to Asia, there are places where they would sacrifice animals and they were offered the blood sacrifice of the animals to these idols. In fact, they are sacrificing uh, this blood I mean, as a... As, uh, uh, as a token of the uh, for protection, and also that you know uh, they will have power uh, with from from the enemy. Uh, they, they've been done. You know the the bloodshed even in some place in Vietnam, in some places like in Tibet, there is also sacrifice of of human blood. We maybe you have not heard about it, but this is what being done in the spirit world. People that follow after the demonic activity. So if we are not uh, equipped properly and we don't know how to engage, we are vulnerable to the attack of the enemy. Our family will be vulnerable to the attack of the enemy. So there are places, the enemy uses the places. These are the strong places, strongholds. The Bible talk about the high places where the enemy uses it as his activity, where uh, he's been worshipped, grows. If you come to Malaysia, you'll see every home. Before you enter into every home of, of, of the Buddhists and also the Hindus, there are... Uh, you know, um, I, there, there are altars, idol altars that, that are, that are uh, you know, built just before you enter into their homes. And in fact, in their homes, there will be huge altars, huge statues that are there. So all this significantly was been, is done uh, for a reason, purpose. But because we are, some of us are in the Western world, maybe in Australia, New Zealand, America and England, we are not accustomed of seeing this. That's why this teaching probably is new to you. And I don't uh, blame uh, some of you that uh, have not been thought on this, but I believe that this is going to expose the enemy. This is going to expose the strategy. And also it's going to equip the church more effectively for us to engage in spiritual warfare. So there are uh, specially dedicated places to the demonic activity 
temples, idols, uh, you know, worship places uh, where the activity of occult are being used. So there are also the hideous place, someone that has been murdered, someone that has committed suicide. This is where the strongholds lingers around the place. So when, when a person the feel of the Holy Ghost, but not strong in the Lord, not living in victorious, or someone that is uh, not been born with the water and the Spirit, uh, expose themselves to this place. They go to these places ignorantly. They can be affected, their emotion, their spirit, and some even will be possessed by the Spirit. And uh, maybe you're not, uh, uh, you know, accustomed of seeing people being possessed. But Asia, it is very, very uh, open. It's rampant. There are, there, there are places that are called hunted houses where um, uh, these places are being used to make movies by the Hollywood. They make movies uh, like um, Exorcist, uh, you know, The Old Man and all these places. These places have been dedicated. And, and you'd be surprised. The, the Catholic high priest will come and dedicate this place to the spirits, to the demonic powers so that you know, that, that whole, uh, they will invite the presence of evil to these places so that people, in fact, that have been active in these movies uh, eventually ending up being possessed by the spirit. So the enemy uses places. We need to be careful when we go to these places. Uh, they make movies. Uh, places can be open as portals. As I mentioned to you, our homes... Places of, of like church, worship place can be portals of God's presence. And, and the other uh, side, in other places where, you know, uh, temples, roads and other things can be portals for the use of the enemy. For these are the places where they occupy, where they dwell. And uh, if we do not uh, know and be ignorant, <clears throat> uh, the enemy can use these places to attack is people. Even we can go to some of these places and I will tell you uh, some of the uh, signs that you pick up the moment you come in contact with these places. I remember that uh, we were in Louisiana one time, uh, sorry, in Wisconsin, and uh, our dear friends in Wisconsin wanted to take us to a place called the House on the Rock. Uh, they visited us uh, many, many uh, years ago. Uh, so they said it's a very historical place, but let's go. So it, 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 it's a house built, a huge, huge, uh, you know, it's like a museum that built, built in, in, in the, inside a rock, inside a, uh, a mountain rock. And it's, it's about three, four stories. Once you enter, there's no exit. You have to go through all the three, four, five levels and come out. Uh, you know, and uh, we were told the place was just good. And uh, I know the place was used as a place of tourists in the past. But this time as we went, first time I'm going there, the moment we, I step into the place, uh, you know, I felt the heaviness, the spirit of uh, heaviness and such a grievance that came over me. And everything that was, it's like I was stepping in inside of hell. That's how it was, so dark, so gloomy. You can feel the presence of, of evil inside there. And, uh, you know, everything was just uh, being positioned, like just like how uh, you will be in hell, the scream. And, uh, you know, I don't know what have uh, become of the, of the organizers of people. And, and uh, probably the, this, they were instructed by the witches or the warlords to, um, to construct the place of people that will come to that Rock house, please do not go to the place. I, I encourage you strongly. And, uh, you know, we'll be oppressed, tormented, be attacked by these uh, demonic powers. And we were attacked. But, you know, we, uh, we went to the first level and we wanted to get out and we could not get out. We cannot exit. There's only one entrance and one exit. We could only, uh, you know, you know uh, come out from the place and we had to go through all the levels. And we had a small girl, a child who was only about seven, eight years old. And, you know, by the time we finished everything, we came out of the place. Literally, that young girl was under the oppression and the torment of a demonic powers. We have to cast the spirit out. We came to the van and we supposed to come back. And all of a sudden, you can see the countenance of the young child was changed. She wanted to rip off our head, um, uh, kill us. The spirit of, of violence and murder, uh, you know, was upon her. She was such in a rage and, and we had to go in prayer and bind and rebuke and cast and plead the blood. You know, she was affected so much in her spirit 
and it lingered for weeks even when we went back home. We were, and even though we were engaged ourselves in warfare, praying against the spirit, it took some time for us to break those spirit that were attacking. It could not attack us. It could, uh, you know, brought heaviness to our heart, uh, you know, fear, uh, heaviness, you know, uh, such a torment in our mind, our spirit, but it attacked the young girl. She did not have the Holy Ghost. She was a young girl. She had attacked. And it took us a while before we cast those things that were attacking us. So don't expose your family to these things. Don't expose because the enemy will use places that you go to ignorantly because out of curiosity, you want to find out and uh, the enemy will use the curiosity as the element to attack his people. And uh, that's what happened. Young children exposed. There will be visitation at night in their dreams. There will be visitation uh, you know, at their homes uh, at night uh, by the Spirit. So places can be open as portals uh, either for God's presence or the evil presence. Don't bring these unclean things back to your home. Once you visit these places... A places where, 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 you know, if you're not strong, you're not walking out of the blood and the covering of the blood in the power of the Holy Ghost, you can go into some of these places and you can pick up the spirit and come back home and you can able to have this trailing spirit back in your home and it can affect the rest of your family and you don't know what is going on, what's happening, arguments, there are fights, there are, you know, um, things that are, uh, you know, anger, things that are uh, taking place uh, in the family. You don't understand. There's no peace, no joy at all. So the, so, so the enemy have, have, have just have access to your home through this, a trailing spirit. So take authority. When you go into these places to do warfare, I'm not telling that we don't have the power. Don't get me wrong. We have the power of the Holy Ghost. We have the blood. We have the name. We have the authority. But because we are ignorant and sometimes that we don't walk in the authority of the Holy Ghost, the enemy will attack us. You know, a child of God, a believer, has to be covered under the blood 24-7. Had, had to be living in the, um, uh, you know, in, in the power of the Holy Ghost all the time. What happened when someone that is not in the Lord goes to these places? They can be possessed. We have come across people in, in, in Vietnam, in India, in Bhutan, in Tibet, in, in Singapore, in Malaysia. People that have opened themselves up to these worship places, eventually ending up being possessed by these demonic powers. And what happened when someone that are born again comes in contact with these places? So they can be affected in the spirit by the spirit of lust, anger, violence, heaviness. They might have the Holy Ghost, but they're not strong. They are not uh, living uh, as a strong Christian life. They're not being filled constantly with the power of the Holy Ghost. Neither they are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. So what happened? They're being uh, affected by lust, anger, violence, heaviness. Your spirit can be defiled and influenced by this presence. Signs. What are the signs? The moment that you come under this attack, you'll feel uh, when once you enter to these places, when the enemy uses places, when you step into these places, some of, of, of us, you'll feel that, uh, you know, nausea. Uh, you'll feel... A headache all of a sudden. Maybe you have experiences. You go to these places. You go to these, uh, uh, you know, movie places or things that are places you should not go. Even to the hospital, some of the area, the hospital. And all of a sudden you have nausea, you have headache, you have a sudden pain in a certain part of your body. Evil thoughts are flashing into you, your mind. Unclean thoughts comes all of a sudden. So all these are the signs that the, the attack is on you. So that is a time that you need to take a moment off. Go into prayer, take authority, bind and command those spirit to leave and take his hands off you and off your family and off your children. There are trailing spirits that lurk on you. So what I'm talking to you, it's, it's real there. What happened when you bring them into your homes? Through toys, through books, through ornaments, so cleanse your home with an oil and plead the blood of Jesus Christ. The moment you pick up something that is not right, so you've been to places that you should not go. I'm not saying that don't go into these places to bind, you know, to a place like a brothel, nightclub, places like a prostitution. Maybe you want to go in and, and, and reach out to these places where to reach the laws. It's good, but don't go alone. Go equip yourself with prayer, fasting with somebody. Take them. Uh, somebody was stronger than you and go to the place. We have been to the, those places before. We took a whole church at one time 
And after about prayer and warfare, after 21 days, all the whole brothels were closed down. These nightclubs were closed, closed down. The prostitution center were closed down. In the mighty name of Jesus, mosques were closed down. So, but we need to engage and know how to engage ourselves effectively. Amen. Praise God. The second key the devil will use is people. There are people that are full of the devil and when you come in contact with them, I call them emotional vampires. They could be outside, it could be someone that the enemy will try to bring. They will suck the life out of you. Every strength, energy, enthusiasm, every joy will be taken away from you. They bring loads of heaviness. The first is a place, the second is the people. They bring loads of heaviness on you and take away your joy. When you come in contact with them and you, you will sometimes you'll say, why did I come in contact with these people? You know, so we as a Christian with the power of the Holy Ghost, but if you're not walking in the spirit and coward, as I mentioned to you under the blood, they can affect you. As we know that God is more powerful, no doubt, but when we fail to walk in the power, when we are, don't walk in the victory, when the blood is not applied, when we are not constantly being filled with the Holy Ghost, we can be an open target for the enemy. We are more powerful, but because we don't exercise the authority and power, the enemy has an upper hand on believers. We can be an open target. In the, in the opposite, you can be so down, so discouraged, but you meet all of a sudden someone and they can just impart encouragement. They can impart life. They can impart strength. They can impart virtue flowing into you. People can be used as the instrument of attack by the enemy. Life just come out of their speech. You meet somebody and just because of the Holy Ghost is full, so full of them, there is no negativity, there is no discouragement, and life is full, is coming, coming out from them. So what happens is that either God can use people or the enemy can use people. People are being used. Sometimes they, they've been used even in the church to attack a, a brother or sister. So when that happens, don't go into a fist fighting in the flesh, but go into a prayer and warfare, binding them. And that's why this lesson is all about that we need to go into binding and losing. Number three, let's continue. The third thing the enemy uses objects. Objects of a contact where the power or spell can be placed as carriers. And you might be asking, how can the enemy will use objects? You can bring the wrong thing into your home. You can bring a picture of a dragon. You can bring a picture of, a, of an animal or something that have been used for occult practices. And this object that attract the presence of the enemy right where you are into your homes. One moment you can have the presence of God, another moment you can have the presence of evil. So you can ask, how can evil demonic powers can visit my home when the presence of Jesus is there? Do you believe the devil visit the churches? Do you believe that the, the, the church folks, the Christian believers are being attacked right in the church? If the devil can visit churches, he has no limitation, qualms of not visiting your and my home. But we don't want to, uh, you know, be ignorant of the of the instruments of, of portals or of object of items that can be a portals for them to have an access to our homes. Object of context I mentioned to you, where power and spell can be placed as carried. They use this. You ask any. Uh, you know, um, witch doctors, they will tell you these are the carriers they use to cast spells. In the Bible, you know, the Bible talk about that Moses' staff has been used as an as a instrument uh, to produce a miracle and power. In the New Testament, aprons and handkerchief uh, was brought as, as to transmit the anointing and the power of God. Things. Certain occult books, even from Hollywood stories, that witches will cast spell on them and, uh, you know, before being distributed. That's why you find that these books are so popular. These, these things, these toys, uh, these movies are so popular because witches that spell, you know, uh, or cast a spell on them. You know, God has anointing. The devil, uh, he himself has what do you call uh, uh, anointing? It's called the, um, um, it's called the, um, I'm trying to remember now. It tried to give, give people favor, wrong favor, wrong influence. 
uh, you know, for the wrong thing. Most of the, uh, you know, pop stars and rock stars have given their soul to the devil. And that's why the albums have been sold. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But, so the devil has what we call a perverted anointing. It's perverted. You know, people sold their soul for them. And because of popularity, because of favor and, and famous, we famous. And uh, every one of the songs uh, has a message. I don't want to go into that. But, you know, uh, so don't bring these items, certain occult books, even from Hollywood, as I mentioned, stories that carry the spells as a, a place of medium. The moment people touch them, they will be cursed. They can be oppressed. Or they can be uh, come in contact with these curses. So if you have any of those items, burn them. It's like having a poisonous snake in your house and expect this poisonous snake not to bite you. Don't play with these things. Don't bring those unclean th things. That's what the Bible says. Do not bring these unclean things to your home. What the Bible talk about? Acts chapter 19 verse 19. Many of those also who use occult. This is in the book of Acts. Peter and all the disciples sees all these occult items. Those that are idol worshipping, they were involved in occult. Those that were involved in, 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 uh, in uh, you know, occult practices, in demonic activities. So they had, uh, you know, ornaments, things, books. So the Bible says many of those also who use occult arts brought their books when they heard conviction grip their, their heart. In Acts 19, 19. And together, and they burned them before all men. And they counted up the price of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. So in today's value, it is close to 1 million US dollars. That's how much it is. When, when the disciples, the apostles, those believers, when they heard the teaching of, of Peter and said, do not touch any of those unclean things. Bring everything and burn them. So they brought all these things and burned them. It, was, it has a great value. But they did not compromise. They did not compromise. They burned everything. They burned everything. Amen. Praise God. Let's just pray right now for a while that amen. Praise God will open up. Before we continue, we have touched about five different spirits five different demonic powers and activity, but we want to continue today. Uh, we'll try to go into another three or four spirits. Uh, but if you have any questions, please send us. If you feel that, you know, uh, you don't want to ask openly in this group, uh, please ask, uh, you know, send us a private message. We can try to help you. These are the teaching that uh, Brother brother Alice have thought, Brother Billy Cole, you know, T.F. Tanny, Sister Tanny have thought, many of them have thought. So, this is not something new, but we just wanted to, you to know that uh, let, let us not be in uh, ignorant, not knowing the device of the enemy. So let's go on to uh, number six, the spirit of haughtiness. We have, we have uh, discussed the five different uh, spirits, uh, how to bind and how to uh, lose what to lose. So now we want to continue um, uh, number six on the number six, the, the spirit that we might be facing and how to take effective authority over this spirit of haunting us. But before we go there, why don't we pray right now, asking God to cover us on his blood, cover us on his knowledge, his wisdom, his revelation, that as we take a walk in this teaching, God will impart to us the anointing, the authority, the understanding, the revelation of his word. Lord, we thank you right now for your people that have come that watch again one more time these words. Jesus Christ, you say that, Lord, that God, we are a mighty, mighty, mighty people, Lord. One of us, shall, Jesus, will, will able to put a thousand to fly, two of us can put a ten thousand to fly. That's how powerful one child of God has been filled with the Holy Ghost. But my God, we can oper be operating under ignorance and do not know what we need to do when we come in contact God. Well, our children are exposed to the attack of the enemy. All our churches are exposed to the attack of the enemy. Sometimes we don't know what to do. But Lord, I pray, impart your revelation, understanding, knowledge from your throne, Father. And I plead your blood upon each and every one of us that are listening, of tuning to this gateway, to the supernatural teaching. 
We ask of you your special blessing, your covering, and use them for your glory. We ask of you, Lord, lead us deeper into your knowledge. Lead us deeper into the things, my God, that we ought to know to make us a powerful, powerful warrior in the kingdom in these last days, that we will not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. According to your word, what it says, Lord, that we will be powerful, Lord, being used mightily by your hand. In Jesus' name. Wonderful Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We praise you. We exalt you. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord. Praise God. And we talked earlier about, you know, the three things the enemy will use, places, people, and objects. Maybe some of you that you have uh, been exposed to these things. And um, maybe some of you have come in contact with these things. And, uh, you know, write us and let us know that how we can be a help to you. Maybe you have some questions. You know, talking about uh, the enemy will use people. Uh, there is one uh, thing, the story that comes to our mind in the Bible where Jesus was asking uh, his disciple, uh, whom do say men I am? And, uh, you know, Peter had the revelation. He was the Messiah. And the next moment, and, and Jesus was praising him. And the next moment, the Lord was rebuking him. Because Peter, it was not the voice of Peter, but the voice of the enemy that tried to stop Jesus from going to the cross and said, I forbid you. You know, that you, this will not happen to you. When Jesus said, in, uh, you know, the Son of Man will be lifted up, he will be crucified. And Peter spoke and said that, you know, um, I, 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 I forbid you, I stop you. And immediately Jesus knew that it was not the voice of man. It was the voice of the devil that is trying to stop him from going to the cross. So immediately he rebuked Peter and saying that, Get thee behind me, Satan. So the devil can use people as an influence sometimes to engage himself, to, 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 to be in a, a stumbling block, and hindrance for people of God from doing the will or purpose of God. That's why we need to have the spirit of discernment. The spirit of discernment is so important. Amen. Praise God. So let's continue. The sixth spirit that we are going to talk and deal with is the spirit of haughtiness. What is the spirit of haughtiness? The spirit of haughtiness, the manifestation of arrogant, smug, pride, idleness, scornful, strife, self-deception, contentious, self-righteous, rebellion, rejection of God. So these are the scriptures that attach to the spirit of haughtiness. 1 Samuel 15 and 23, 2 Samuel 22 and verse 8, Proverbs 1 and 22, Proverbs 3 and, and verse 34, Proverbs 6, 16 and 17, Jeremiah 43 and verse 2, Jeremiah 48 and verse 29, Proverbs 49 and 16, Isaiah 2, 11 and 17, Ezekiel 16, 49 to 50, Daniel 5 and 20, Obadiah 1 and 3, Luke 18, 11 to 12. So the roots of the spirit of haughtiness is the works of the flesh. Galatians 5, 19, 21. Again, we're going back to the work of the flesh. You cannot rebuke the work of the flesh. You cannot bind and command the work of the flesh to go. As I mentioned to you earlier, the only thing you can do is to crucify the work of the flesh and you need to bind and rebuke the work of or the attack of the enemy. 
You cannot do vice versa. You cannot crucify the, the, the attack of the enemy and you cannot, uh, you know, rebuke the work of the flesh. You cannot do that. The Bible says, by their fruit, you will know all men. Matthew 7 and 20, according to Matthew 6 and 10, 11, 12, 12, 29. Bind the spirit of haughtiness and lose five spirit of God that is humble, number one. Number two is contrite spirit. Number three is humility. Number four, love. Number five is compassion. As in, 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 in the book of Proverbs 16 and 19, Romans 1 and verse 4, when you bind the spirit of haughtiness, lose humbleness, lose contract spirit, lose humility, love and compassion. And always, every time you go into binding and losing, always plead the blood at the end. Plead the blood. That, that is warfare. That is warfare. You might come across people that have been set free. They've been saved. They are in the church. They have been uh, delivered uh, one time, but because they opened the portals, they opened the doors of the attack, the enemy, and that's why the spirit of haughtiness have, you know, is all over them. As long as you're in the flesh, you can be afflicted by sickness, by disease, you can be tempted, and you can be affected by the spirit that can influence your own spirit and it can manifest in your flesh. That's why we need to take authority and go into binding and losing. In, in Malaysia, we have come across people that have you know, involved so much you know, uh, previously before they coming to the Lord into occult worship, in idol worshiping, uh, you know, into Satanism, uh, priests, temple priests. So when God has set them, they were still struggling with those things. There are Christians that are struggling with the spirits of attack, the attack of the spirits. And sometimes preaching the word alone will not help them. Counseling alone will not help them. In every church, not everybody live a victorious life. There are people who go through struggles, struggle in the flesh, struggle in the mind, struggle in their, in their walk with God, temptation. And many times those things that, you know, been attacked with are all this from the spirit world. And you cannot counsel, you cannot bring them to a, you know, to a psychologist, to a counsel, a, 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 a Christian counselors to counsel them. We have to engage ourselves. Our children can be exposed. You know, to, 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 to strong modes, as I mentioned, to phonography, lust, to drugs, to habits, to media, to many things. So we need to go into warfare. Amen. Let's continue. The seventh spirit that you are going to dwell is the spirit of heaviness. Now, the spirit of heaviness can come upon our people. As long as you're in the flesh, we can be attacked. One day you can be filled with joy. One day you can be filled with happiness. One day you can be filled with the, the peace of God. And suddenly these things just come up upon you. you. You can go into people's homes. You can go into a certain territory. You can go into some places. And the spirit of heaviness can come upon you so strongly. And sometimes people open up the portals. People open up the doors. To invite the enemy into the homes. I'm talking about, you know, like music they, they, they hear. Movies they watch. You know, they, 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 they bring things they're not, to, they are, they're not supposed to bring. People bring out of curiosity, Ouija boards, you know, items. Go through the items in your home and check what it's not supposed to be there. Something that has been dedicated to the, to the devil. Something that has been used as an ornament of spell, to cast spell. Something that have been used, some even medication. I don't want to go into medication. Medication is, you know, um, is, is is not everything is 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 bad. They are good, but some of the uh, uh, pharmaceutical medicines have been used, uh, you know, in, uh, in in the wrong aspect as drugs to addict people, and that's why that, you know, uh, people open up themselves to this attack. I know that one sister in, a, uh, you know, in Kentucky that used to take one day 79 tablets, 
three times a day. It's like it's like a whole meal. And she's been on this for more than three years. She got addicted. What, what am I talking about? This is the spirit of addiction that come through drugs. And uh, we, we were in the service. We bind. We, we, we command to go. She had a mental torture. No peace. The doctor began to give her, you know, med medicine after medicine after medicine after medicine. He started off with four and five and ended up to 15, ended up to 20, ended up to 40, now ended up to 70 over medication. It got worse and worse and worse and worse. Medication will make people worse. I'm not against medications. I'm not against doctor. I'm not against some of the treatment. But sometimes when the enemy are involved in afflicting people, he can use drugs. He can use doctors. He can use the element to to pull people into uh, addiction. When you cannot shake yourself, we bind those things from the sister and she was broke loose. But after one week, she went back again. Today, the family ended up in divorce. She had a, and, and not only she was afflicted by this addiction, her daughter was into this, her son was into this. Her husband, you know, was going, going through a mental torture because they don't want to believe what we are teaching here. This is, this is uh, you know, in, in, in America, in Europe, in, in England, people are being abused by medication in the name of treatment, not knowing that there were a spirit of addiction that behind it. So we need to be aware, not to be ignorant. So as I mentioned to you, the spirit of heaviness, what is the spirit of heaviness? If the spirit of heaviness can lead you to, you know, um, depression, disappointment, dis depression, sadness. You just feel sadness all of a sudden. You feel heaviness, sadness, like you want to, you want to mourn. There is sorrow, grief, insomnia. You cannot sleep at night. There's no peace. There are people who try to go to sleep at night. They cannot sleep at night. Self-pity, rejection, broken heart, despair, dejection. Hopelessness, you feel like, you know, someone feel like they're hopeless. Depression, suicidal thought, all these things will lead more and more and more deep. And that's why they end up in the, in, in, into medication, suicidal thoughts, inner hurts. Previously, somebody hurt you, abused. When they were child, they've been used, been abused by somebody. You know, we have come across wounded spirit. We call this wounded spirit. People have been abused in the younger age. And they carry the wounds. They carry those, those spirit of, 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 of the wounded spirit right into the adulthood. And, and, and they constantly battle with this. The uncle have abused uh, some of them. So the, 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 the stepfather and, and, and things that have been, been abused while they were growing up. Inner hurts, torn spirit, heaviness. So all this you can find in Isaiah 61, 3, Luke 4 and 18, Nehemiah 2 and 2, Proverbs 15 and 13, Psalm 69, 20, Proverbs 12 and 18, 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9, Isaiah 61 and 3, Mark 9, Luke 4 and 18, Proverbs 18 and 14, Proverbs 26 and 22. So what are the roots? These are the works of the flesh. But the enemy will always use the Works of the flesh, Galatians 5, again 50 to 21. The Bible says, by their fruits you will know all men. I talk about wounded spirit, I talk about heaviness, I talk about, you know, um, uh, people are being wounded. You know, uh, things that can be passed from one generation to another generation. So we're going to talk about this in the coming uh, sessions but the Bible talks about by their fruits you will know them, Matthew 6 and 10. So bind the spirit of heaviness. When you bind the spirit of heaviness, you go again the spirit of heaviness. Take authority of every suicidal thought, sorrowfulness. I, I, I met a, you know, a, a sister in, in America that constantly she wanted to weep and weep and cry. She had the Holy Ghost one time, but she lost the joy of the Holy Ghost. You come across people, all this self-pity, I'm not good, people don't love me. Uh, you know, whatever that I do, I'm ending up like a failure. Nobody loved me, nobody loved my children. I'm a failure, I don't have money, I, I, I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm no good, there's no point for me to leave, to go on. Self-pity is not of God. 
So we need to identify when this spirit try to attack the people of God. So bind the spirit of happiness and lose comfort, joy, strength, the garment of praise, the oil of joy and gladness and liberty for the spirit of brokenness. John chapter 5 and verse 26, Isaiah 63 and verse 3. Lose the strength of God. Lose the joy of God. Lose the strength of God. Lose the oil of gladness upon these people. Even as you bind the spirit. So, amen, praise God. So the, the, the eight demonic spirit that we want to deal today, we want to talk today. The last one we want to talk today is the spirit of boredom. What is the spirit of boredom? The spirit of boredom is a manifestation is unfaithfulness. Somebody that could have been saved can come to the Lord or somebody who would not want to come to the Lord because they're constantly affiring with this water. Manifestation is unfaithfulness, adultery, fornication, is dealing with their spirit and soul and the flesh. Prostitution, somebody who have been, came out from prostitution, somebody who been, came out from abuse, child abuse, I mentioned chronic dissatisfaction, love of money, you know, the lust of the flesh, idolatry, excessive appetite, worldliness, gluttony, all these are attached to the spirit of boredom. So you know somebody is like that, giving themselves access to things, to abusiveness, that they let uh, themselves to be abused. We met with a girl that who, who uh, had this problem constantly. She was cutting her wrist and trying to commit suicide. She did not know what she was, been filled with the Holy Ghost, been baptized the Holy Ghost and uh, baptized in Jesus' name, but she was facing these things. So what need to be dealt? The Bible talk about that, amen, in Ezekiel 16, 15 and 28, Proverbs 5, verse 1 to 14, Galatians 5 and 19. Even in Ezekiel 16, 28, Proverbs 15, 27, 1 Timothy 6 and 7, Leviticus 17 and 7, 1 Corinthians 6, 13, 16. The roots again, the work of the flesh. The flesh will always be the door, the portal, where they will open up the door for the enemy to come in and to attack them. The enemy will use the flesh, will use the flesh. So bind the spirit of wardoms. When you bind the spirit of wardom, lose the spirit of God, pure spirit, purity, holiness, righteousness, commitment, insatiable, increasing hunger for God, only for God, hunger for the spirit of God, the presence of God is in Ephesians 3 and 16, John 3, 34, John um, 3, 14 to 12. Uh, John 14 and 12. So these are some of the things that we talk about. Amen. When you come across people in that nature, people in that places, we might go into counseling, talking to people. We might be in the place where we have uh, counseled them, talked to them, pray for them. But it's time for us to, you know, to go and engage ourselves in a warfare praying, in binding and losing commanding the spirit to go and lose the right spirit, pleading the blood of Jesus Christ, asking the angels to break every band. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and I want to talk a little bit about fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer is so powerful when you engage yourself in warfare praying. You know, there are unseen forces that have been released from heaven when you go into fasting and pray. These are the two elements. Whether it can be intercession, as I mentioned to you, or it can be a warfare prayer. When we fast and pray, the angelic hosts are, are being released in the atmosphere that they can able to engage themselves. You know, like when Moses was fighting with the Amorites, with the enemies, the Bible uh, talk about that in praise God. They were Aaron. They were Aaron and her that lift up the hands, lift up the rod, the staff of Moses. As long as the staff was being lifted up, Israel was prevailing. Israel was winning. But the moment 
Moses just let the staff down. Israel was losing. They were un unseen forces that were fighting for Moses. They were prevailing. They were works. I mean, they were angelic hosts. They were fighting uh, for Moses, prevailing and breaking every forces of the enemy. That's what happened when we go into fasting and praying. When we go into fasting and praying, God will release his angelic host to fight on our behalf so that whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we lose in on earth shall be loose in heaven. There is power in binding and losing and also in fasting and prayer. God sends his angel. That's why in engaging ourselves in warfare praying, we need to ask God to send his mighty angels to bind certain forces and powers of darkness in people, in places, in objects, in things, in area, in territories that we need to go into fasting and prayer. It might take one day of fasting. We might go into three days, into 10 days, into 12 days, into 21 days like Daniel. But every time we go into fasting and prayer, into binding and losing, there is mighty, mighty power of God that being released on the face of this earth upon place. I've come across you know, brothels, uh, you know, uh, nightclubs, prostitution centers, mosques, idol worshiping place being closed down through fasting and prayer when people bind themselves up together to pray and engage themselves with prayer and fasting. God releases mighty forces of the angelic hosts to bind and wage war against these elements. Amen. Praise God. When we come back next week, we are going to Continue with the spirit, with the nine spirit, the spirit of infirmity. We're going to talk about the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of death and dumb, the spirit of bondage, the spirit of fear, seducing spirit. But also I want to talk to you about the power of the blood, how important the blood, how to apply the blood when we come back next week, how we need to walk in the victory of the blood of Jesus and how powerful the blood. Why don't we go before God right now, lift our hands before we close this session. Father, we just want to thank you, Father, for your word, for your session, for this time you've given to us. I'm asking that Jesus Christ anoint each and every one of us, Lord, for you have removed every ignorance from us that we can able to walk in completeness, in total knowledge of how to engage in warfare prayer. I'm asking that, Lord, you anoint us, make us a powerful, powerful, mighty, powerful warrior in your kingdom in this last day. Jesus Anoint everyone. Lord, I'm asking you, every member in the gateway of the supernatural that are listening, that are open their ears and their hearts to this teaching, use them, anoint them and bring victory, breakthrough to their life, bring victory and breakthrough into their homes, bring victory into their children, Lord, and into their churches, every leaders, every pastors, every prayer warriors, intercessors, anoint them and use your people mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ, even those that are watching right now, release a warring might and power, Lord, upon them. And they will be greatly be used. We call Rosh Yondo. In the name of Jesus, we call That God, mighty victory and anointing will be released upon your people to be used and engaged, Lord, to pull down every stronghold. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you. Let, uh, uh, let the uh, commands keep coming in. Those of you that are experiencing a great victory, we have a lot of friends from America that have written back and told us as you're practicing these prayers, as you're engaging yourself in such a prayer that you're seeing a great results in your homes, in your children, in the churches, even some of the warfare, um, a prayer warfare. You know, recently I just want to tell you a story that uh, some of our prayer intercessors from Wisconsin have went into a playground, uh, you know, children pray playground. They wrote to us, they said they saw a writing on the floor, an occult, a satanic sign that talk about uh, the, the, the cultic, uh, occultic thing that are written. Uh, I could not remember all those things that, and uh, you know, that was written there, but they wrote back and uh, and uh, we told that is definitely occultic, a Satan worship right in America and Wisconsin in a playground. 
So they went back and uh, they brought water, they washed it and they prayed over that. And immediately after they did that, one of the sisters and some of them were attacked. And the prayer intercessors and we had to go and pray and bind those attacks. She was attacked emotionally, physically, in a spirit. And we had to pray those things had, uh, need to be broken. And that thing wasn't broken. So people of God, this is what I'm talking to you. is real. Don't think that this is just some kind of a fable, some, some tales that I'm talking. Just because nobody thought this is something new. Don't think this is just a, a fable story. That's what the enemy wants to keep us in ignorance. Though that, so that we will be living in defeat, in torment. But God wants us to be mighty conquerors. The Bible says we are made more than conquerors. Powerful conquerors. But we need to engage and know how to engage in warfare. That's why all this teaching has been, been designed that, that, that we, our, our, our knowledge be open, our revelation be open. Not only to intercessors, prayer warriors, but to pastors, leaders, missionaries, and, and, and you know, child of God. Don't you think that you will not be under attack? We will be. Amen. But we have a greater power. We have a greater authority. We have the blood. We have the name. We have the word. And uh, we need to walk in this. Amen. Praise God. The Lord bless you. Have a great week. And uh, we will see you in our next session as we continue in the binding and losing. Amen. Praise God. Apostolic Channel, every week to your home. God is moving in an unprecedented way in these last days. With everything that is going on currently, God has an appointment for you. Don't miss out on your greatest assignment in this closing hour. Going back to the Apostolic Foundation, back to the Book of Acts. Before the last trumpet sounds, this is our time, the time for believers to rise up. Follow us every week in this network to be equipped and to be empowered for the end time harvest. God is calling His people back to the upper room where it all started.